I have come across what I think is the most logical explanation for why so many New Year's resolutions fail. And it's not anything to do with motivation or setting the right goals or anything like that. Any of the other reasons you've heard for why a lot of New Year's resolutions tend to fail. It could be because now is not the best time to start fresh. Welcome to the Energy Within Podcast, helping you to embrace your weirdness, beat imposter syndrome, and take action on your soul's purpose. My name is Carrie Jokala. I am your host. I am a Reiki master teacher, a fitness instructor, a wife, a mom to two little boys, and this is episode 171, and I'm sure you can hear in my voice that it's back, but it's not <laughs> sounding exactly like it always does. And yes, I missed last week. <laughs> and I probably sound a little tired. And that's because I am. <laughs> Sleep was very hard to come by last night. But it's actually all pretty fitting for what I've been intending to talk about for this episode all week anyway. So back on December 29th, we had our New Year's Reiki and intention setting events. It went really well. It was so much fun. And I already knew that I was giving myself some grace despite my desire to start prior to the new year. I knew that I wasn't really going to be able to do much of anything towards any of my intentions until January 2nd. Maybe a little bit on the 1st, but not much. Because the next couple of days were already completely booked, super busy, no time to do anything, and no way I was going to want to do the biggest goal that's meant to help me accomplish all the other ones, which is to get up really crazy early. <laughs> I knew that I needed to give myself grace. I knew that I was going to want to have at least a rest day. And it turned into a rest week. And even last night I was like, okay, it's Sunday night going into Monday morning. It's time to get going. Everything's moving along better. My voice is coming back. I'm getting my energy back. And... Then our little guy didn't want to go to sleep at all. And, of course, I continued what I've been doing all week, which is giving in and allowing myself to sleep rather than trying to cut my sleep short. Because if you heard one of the, maybe even both of the interviews that I did with Mindy Hebner, and Mindy, if you're listening, yes, we still need to do a coffee date. It's been way too long. <laughs> but... We talked about how important sleep is, and despite what else you might want to do, like get up and work out, or you know, get up and start tackling your goals, more often the better choice is more sleep, rather than de intentionally depriving yourself of sleep. If you have the ability, and if you can make your schedule work so that you can get a good amount of sleep, you should do that. <laughs> because that's really, in the end, what your body's going to need the most. If you're functioning on not enough sleep and you have the ability to change that, <laughs> and I say that because if you're a new mom, there's not really anything you can do about that. But beyond that, <laughs> if your kids are sleeping through the night... It's really not the best idea to intentionally deprive yourself of sleep. So I have continued to choose the extra little bit of sleep because I knew I needed it. 
as much as I was ready to go all in gangbusters towards my intentions and start getting things done, I knew I needed the rest. So here's the thing. And I'm sure you're hearing a lot about this now, too, from everywhere on social media, maybe other podcasts you're listening to, because everybody's talking about goal setting. And I did the New Year's Reiki and intention setting. But if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you know (laughs) that I'm very much about following your intuition, listening to your body, listening to your intuition, and doing what's right for you and if it feels right to set a resolution or two and really work hard as hard as you can towards them this year and this is your year there's nothing wrong with that go for that I'm about to be there myself (laughs) but if you get the nudge to rest you should listen and rest now There's a part of me that is getting a little nervous because there are a couple of things that I would have liked to have done by now that I haven't even started, so it's making me a little antsy. (laughs) But I'm trying my best to stay focused, stay calm about it, know that I can still get it done, and that things will eventually calm down and I'll be able to still get enough sleep while getting up at the time that I would like to get up. (laughs) But here's something to think about which I've started seeing a lot about this year and I've never really thought about before. I have come across what I think is the most logical explanation for why so many New Year's resolutions fail and it's not anything to do with motivation or setting the right goals or anything like that any of the other reasons you've heard for why a lot of new year's resolutions tend to fail it could be because now is not the best time to start fresh with anything it's not spring yet (laughs) nothing else is coming back to life or starting over we are literally in the middle of winter still at least on this side of the world (laughs) And even still, no matter what part of the world you're on, you're still in the middle of a season. And I really do think that it makes much more sense to tune into how we are aligned with nature, how we are cyclical beings just like everything in nature. And so here we are saying that it's a brand new year, smack dab in the middle of winter, And trying to reset ourselves and start fresh towards new goals and revving up to full speed when this is kind of really a season of rest. Now, I don't remember enough details to give you the full report on everything that I've been seeing, but I have seen a lot more focus on how perhaps the calendar that we follow saying that the new year starts on January 1st may not be I don't know if accurate is the right word to use here but I've seen lists shared of different countries and cultures that celebrate the new year for them on completely different days some of them are in March and April but last year we did the interview with uh, I'm completely blanking on her last name right now But it's Feng Shui Jillian, and we did an interview, and she talked about the Chinese New Year, which is in February. So even just that, just that, I would still consider that the middle of winter, but just the fact that there are different countries, different cultures that celebrate the start of the new year at a completely different time, regardless of whether or not they recognize January 1st as a new year as well. And even something as simple as apparently the fiscal new year that starts in April. Like, what is that about? Why wouldn't that start at the same time as the brand new year? You know, so just things to think about to consider why we tend to fail at New Year's resolutions. I think that makes more sense because we're in the middle of a season. So regardless of whether or not you agree with the calendar idea, the season idea is there and maybe... 
I'm not saying that you should shelve all your goals and now wait until spring, but just hypothetically speaking, it almost makes more sense to align our New Year's goals with spring rather than the middle of winter. I don't know that I'll ever do that, (laughs) but it does help, I think, with the perspective on not beating yourself up for not being able to either start on your resolutions right away or stick to your resolutions 100% that you just go in and do your best if you are setting goals and not stress over it to allow yourself days of rest to not set goals like I'm going to be at the gym 365 days this year because that's just not realistic I'm not saying it's not possible. (laughs) As long as you're not, please don't go and lift weights every single day, full body, (laughs) and not ever take a day of rest or let your different muscle groups rest. Do some yoga, do some Pilates, do a cardio class. Mix it up a little bit if you're going to go every day. But just, just saying... Even if you were to set a goal like that, to give yourself grace if something happens and you can't make it to the gym because now technically you failed on your goal because you said 365 days and you haven't made it for 365. You made it for 364 now. And I have heard in recent years, so many people start talking about aligning your business cycle with your female cycle. And the first time I heard about that, I'm like, oh, that's an interesting idea, but I don't know if I need that. Especially because I don't, I don't get cramps or any of that kind of stuff. Like it's, it's really not that much of a bother for me, other than just having to, you know, deal with it. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. But so I didn't think that was for me. But the more I pay attention to the cycles of nature and just the cycle of female energy how our energy cycle is different than a male's, which is not right or wrong, which is not better or worse. It's simply the way it is. (laughs) We exist, I believe, on a 28-day cycle as far as energy, too. Like, it's all aligned. Whereas male energy tends to be more of a 24-hour cycle. So if you didn't know that before take that into consideration and understand any highs or lows in your energy throughout the month whether or not you tie that in with how your other cycle goes but it's all just starting to make more sense to me and I'm feeling like maybe we should look into that a little more (laughs) but for now to just take that basic idea that we are cyclical beings we are technically a part of nature as well so it makes sense to pay attention and to align with what's going on outside of us because it's all a mirror inside and outside internal external it's all mirroring each other and resistance comes in obstacles come in stress comes in when we are out of alignment so take that message how you need it and from this point on No more beating yourself up if you are not hitting your goals, if you're not following the same routine every day, if you're not hitting everything you want to hit every single day, if you suddenly need a day or a week of rest. (laughs) By the way, if you simply listen to the podcast and you were wondering what was going on next week, if you follow me on Instagram or you're in the Energy Within Facebook group, That is where you would catch updates if for some reason, like last week, I'm unable to post, which hasn't happened in a while, and I was actually hoping that I would still be able to get an episode up, even if it was late, but too much time went by, so we're just continuing on with a missed week, and it's okay. (laughs) Now, technically, I should be updating my email list first, but... It's still not working for me on my laptop the way that it should. So it's just (laughs) more of a technical struggle than it should be. So eventually I will be able to get that fixed. (laughs) 
it requires a new laptop is is what's going on and call me old but while I can obviously do it because I've been doing it using my phone I'm just I'm not good at doing things like that on my phone it takes longer than it probably should and yeah so <laughs> I have resistance there <laughs> to going in and doing these things on my phone so I'm really excited because if you're listening to this on Wednesday, tomorrow is the beginning of Unshackled and we have three beautiful women in there and you have the rest of today and into tomorrow. If you're deciding that you want to do it, you can still jump in, but just know that our first day is Thursday, January 12th. We meet every Thursday for the next eight weeks. I'm bringing in a couple special guests. And you also will receive the Boundaries Intensive, which may be renamed, but for now it's called the Boundaries Intensive, which is going to be coming up sometime in February. I'll give you more details on that as we get closer. But that's included in Unshackled for you if you are a member of that. And of course, take a look on the website. Go book your Reiki session. Book yourself an Oracle card reading And take a look at the group options too. If you ever want to bring me in for group Reiki or group Oracle card readings for your team or a group of friends, you can check that out on the website. You can reach out and ask me any questions that you have. And again, make sure that you are following me on Instagram. I am Carrie Jokala. One of my goals is to get back to posting daily. Ideally a reel every day, but at least a post every day so make sure you're following me there make sure you hop into the energy within facebook group and if by chance one of your goals or intentions is to create a meditation routine i invite you to check out the meditation options on my website there are some free ones up there including the collection of five which are the meditations that were released on the podcast in March last year. So you can still find them on the podcast. But the beautiful part about downloading them from the website is that I have cut out all the podcast chatter, the intro, the outro. So it is simply the meditation. You don't have to fast forward through anything. You don't have to search for anything. You just find it in your playlist and hit play and start from the beginning and end at the end with no other distractions. And I also have a paid collection, it's only $17. It is the Confidence Boosting Meditation Collection. There are 12 meditations in there, all ordered and designed to help you boost your confidence. So check those out if those sound in alignment for you. And make sure you're following me on Instagram. You hop into the group and you get yourself on the email list. And I am so grateful that you are here. Thank you so much for listening. And I will see you next time.